and welcome back to Metropo Sports Center. My name is Nashon Owano. As I had promised in the first part of the show, I was going to be joined by Ronald Okoth, who's the founder of RO Sports Academy. If you are an avid watcher of the show, then you realize that Ronald Okoth is not uh, a guest in this show. I think at this point, as I always say, we are going to set up just a corner for him because he's become a regular in this show. Now, Ronald, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you so much. I'm glad to hear once again after quite some time. Yeah, a lot, a lot has happened since the last time we are on the show. I mean, maybe you could bring us up to speed. Uh, since you were <laughs> here last, you retired from football. Yeah. You moved away from Nairobi. Now you have a sports academy. Bring us up to speed with what you've been up to since the last time you were here. Yeah, true. A lot has happened. Uh, I think I'm um, shaping up and enjoying life after football. Retired, I've been retired like four or five months ago. Yeah, so far I think uh, plenty of good uh, good news we have on board. We, uh, my organization, Roads to Goals, is up and running. Uh, my soccer academy, Arrow Sports Soccer Academy, which actually is a program under Roads to Goals, is also up and running. Mm -hmm. And yeah, things are just shaping up and we are looking forward to, there are some other big, big, big plans we have. And there is some good news actually coming up, coming very soon, probably by March. So yeah, you should stay tuned to it. Okay. Yeah. I guess, I guess what they say is, is true is once a footballer, always a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Okay. Yeah. So, Ronald, I wanted us to delve into uh, some two topical issues that have been the con uh, uh, topic of conversation in the course of this week. Now, the biggest match that people were watching out for uh, on Sunday, that is the UFC, that was Dustin Poirier and uh, Conor McGregor. I mean, uh, from the look of things, McGregor really got a beating in that particular match. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I think, yes, he did, but uh, I think looking at the first round of the matches, especially the first few minutes, mm -hmm. uh, to me, uh, Conor was definitely on top of the proceedings. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, Poirier being the, uh, the the type of calculative fighter that he is, I probably he took his time. And mm -hmm. as, as you can see, he was very calculative with this, uh, especially the leg shots, mm -hmm. because I think uh, that's what... Uh, put the, the final nail on the coffin because mm. after that I think uh, McGregor's uh, leg, probably knee, was mm. so, I think he had a dead leg already mm -hmm. and then that's when uh, Pori just stro struck at the, at, at the right moments with the heavy blows and everything. Mm. So to me he was definitely the, the best fighter mm. and also you can remember the first time these two guys met, mm -hmm. uh, McGregor was uh, uh, took, uh, took the day mm -hmm. and I think uh, Pori has just come back as a much better fighter than he was before. Okay. Yeah. Now I think uh, the conversation with, going within the quarters is maybe Conor, it's time for Conor McGregor to maybe leave the octagon the same way uh, <laughs> Habib left the octagon. Do you, do you agree with those sentiments? No, I definitely don't agree because mm -hmm. if you look at uh, most UFC fighters, mm -hmm. I mean uh, they're in the peaks probably in 35, 40, mm -hmm. 45, mm -hmm. uh, 50. So I think Conor still has a lot of uh, gas, gas left in his tank. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, a, a fighter like Conor, to me, he's, uh, he's one of those majestic fighters who actually, if you talk about UFC, mm -hmm. definitely the name that comes first is McGregor. So mm -hmm. I think uh, he still has a lot left in him. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably he hasn't fought for like over a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just don't uh, fight for... Uh, over here and you come back and expect to have a good a good start mm -hmm. so to me he still has a lot left in him and uh, we are just b about to see more and more of him and uh, for the likes of Poria to me I think is now their time okay yeah. uh, looking at uh, Magerga's uh, fight streak he's lost like two matches that is um, against uh, Dustin Poirier and then he lost again at uh, Khabib what what does he need to do if he's going when he's going to have his next match maybe some pointers that he needs to be looking out for because right now the reality is people have understood Conor McGregor maybe <laughs> yeah. at some point too much talking and less fighting you know uh, true 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 I think uh, uh, the person who actually uh, probably brought the uh, brought a different tra trajectory in uh, McGregor's career was Habib mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at uh, the fight that he had with, Ka with Habib uh, uh, he was so full of himself you know mm -hmm. he's one of those proud fighters you know uh, always doing a lot of, uh, you know, according to the U UFC language, the trash-talking type mm -hmm. of fighter. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the, the, the type of beating that he got from uh, Khabib actually took away his confidence. Yeah. And if you look at the fight that he fought with uh, uh, Pori just the other day, mm -hmm. uh, he was a player that actually was lacking in a lot of confidence, you mm -hmm. know, the self-belief. This is a different Conor, Conor McGregor that we are used to. Uh -huh. The one we are used to before, you know, he was all over the place, yeah. uh, too proud and everything, uh, you know, too self-centered. But right now, I think... Uh, uh, 
the reality is dawning on him that you know what uh, you, you, you're not immortal yeah. you can be beaten and uh, now it, 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 it will take a lot for him probably to work out and uh, just get his self -conf confidence back the esteem back and probably to just realize you know what he still has some fight left in him but the beating that again he got the other day <laughs> it will take him some quite some time before he can get his confidence back i guess it's true when they say that life has a funny way of humbling people and it's <laughs> good to always stay humble because you never really know uh, how things are going to pan out yeah. now switching gears into matters epl something that i've been looking forward to uh, talking to in a while i mean i spoke about it last week but there's never much of football you know you never really get enough of football to uh, talk about uh, a lot of changes have happened man the, the past two weeks manchester united were at the top of the table now this week things have changed uh, what is the most interesting dynamic in, in, in EPL that makes things so, um, for lack of a better word, volatile? Because one day you are the top, the following day you are the bottom of the table. What's really going on? Uh, th that's the beauty of football. Uh, that's the beauty of football because mm. uh, if you look at all the teams that are actually fighting for a top five position, mm. or not even top five, let me just say all the teams in the English Premier League, mm. they're so unpredictable. Mm. Uh, today you are top of proceedings, the next day uh, you're being flogged everywhere by different other teams. Mm. For example, a team like Liverpool, a mm -hmm. uh, team that has had a very good run, fantastic run last season. They are looking like a, they are looking, a, they are a pale shadow of themselves compared to last season. Mm -hmm. uh, Manchester United always blowing hot and cold, hot and cold. Mm -hmm. At times they'll win games, at times they'll you know concede easy goals. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, I was even surprised that Manchester United are, are on top of the table. Yeah. I never expected that. Look at a team like uh, a team I support like Crystal Palace. Yeah. You know, last season we had a very poor run probably eight eight games yeah. uh, eight eight matches we lost in a row mm -hmm. and this season probably we, we are still also blowing hot and cold mm -hmm. so i think uh, the bit about the english premier league and football in general is that it's so unexpected it, it's so you, you know you can never predict it a team can be uh, definitely on fire this season the next minute they're not really that good Man talk of manchester city one of the best teams actually in the english premier league yeah. uh, you definitely expect them to be, you know, uh, fighting for the championship, but they've been having their own struggles. So uh, the bit about football is the unpredict unpredictability that it brings, and uh, that's what actually English Premier, Premier League now is currently offering us. Mm. Yeah. I wanted us to still stick to Manchester United. Do you think they have a chance? Because for a fact, Manchester United fans have not been giving us the easiest of time <laughs> the first couple of weeks, just to mention, but a few, Clint, yeah. Austin, and a couple of my friends. Like, every time I went on Twitter, the first thing I'll see is, we're still on top of the table. So do you think, do you think, do you think they're still on course, or do you think they have a chance in winning the English Premier League? They definitely have a chance. Mm -hmm. They definitely have a chance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, again, with football, you can never rule out any team. Yeah. Uh, like, it, it, a team like Manchester United, uh, personally, even if you ask me, I, I couldn't even, not even for a moment that I, I could even imagine seeing them on top of the table. Mm -hmm. But they really worked hard behind the scenes, you know. They put in the work and uh, they're actually in a better position to be one of the club that, you know what, if they can continue putting in the same work ethic week in, week out, mm -hmm. they probably get the maximum points and uh, go ahead and carry the, the, another title in, the, in, the, in their bag. Mm -hmm. So to me, I can't rule them out. Actually, any team that is in top five currently, you mm -hmm. can never rule them out because yeah. uh, the likes of Liverpool, Pool, keep on dropping points as well. Manchester City, as much as they are blowing uh, a lot of, uh, you know, fire, they, they have a lot of fire in them, but again, it's a beatable club. Mm -hmm. Manchester United, uh, nobody's really giving them a chance, but somehow, some way, they keep on, you know, getting the job done. So mm -hmm. I still give them a chance that they can go ahead and carry the, uh, the, the title. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably it won't be fair if we don't talk about Liverpool. I mean, what's, what's happening at Liverpool? <laughs> Remember when, when they faced Manchester United um, the other time, uh, when they faced Manchester United, like, is it like two weeks ago, um, the game went into a barren draw. Then when they played with Liverpool in the FA uh, competition, that is last week, they were beaten 3-2. What, 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 is, what is going on at Liverpool? Should we, you know, we are, by, by being uh, against Manchester United, low-key we support <laughs> Liverpool and hope that Liverpool beats, you know, like takes the league or something or so. What's going on at, at Liverpool? Should we be worried about Liverpool? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, if you look at Liverpool a season a season behind, they, they, they were a team that were, you know it, it was unbeatable. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a lot of quality in the team, a lot of depth. You know uh, the type of coaching that they have 
one of the best ma ma managers in the world, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, with football, you can never be on top of everything, mm -hmm. season in, season out. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened to Manchester City, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's a season that everything, you know, just works in your favour. But again, uh, let's remember that uh, they're playing against uh, very good quality clubs, mm -hmm. very good quality players. Mm -hmm. And with each game that they play, you know, the, the, the other opposing managers, they keep on learning how Liverpool uh, uh, plays. And uh, the next time they will be facing Liverpool, it won't be just a match like, you know, any other or maybe a match like the previous one. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the, the, the type of play that they are, they, they are now using, the type of style of play, the type of, you know, players that they have, most of the clubs in the English Premier League have mastered how to play against Liverpool. Mm -hmm. That's why you, 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 you see them, they can now concede goals. You see them now, the teams that now, you know, can get three points from them, mm -hmm. something that we used not to see the other season. So I think it's all about, uh, you know, mastering how Liverpool have been playing mm -hmm. and you know, mastering the, now knowing how the type of players that they have mm -hmm. and just executing your plans. And if you, exec if you execute your plans rightly when you're playing against a team like Liverpool, mm -hmm. you're bound probably to get a point or even the three points. And it, we, we've seen that it, it's, it's been proven. So mm -hmm. I think uh, they have a very good side as well mm -hmm. because it's a team that has a lot of quality players in it, a lot of depth, you know, and uh, it's, a, it's a team that the manager has the luxury mm -hmm. and the luxury to uh, rotate the team around and still get the three points, but mm -hmm. uh, not anymore because uh, uh, right now the type of opponents that they are playing against mm -hmm. also have a fight, you know, to take to them. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe as we wrap up the second part of the show, Ronald, um, I um, this issue is, 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 is important to me because of an Arsenal fan that is the issue of Mesut Ozil. Yeah. I mean, he finally moved to Fanabach. Um, personally, as an Arsenal, as an Arsenal, not I almost said I'm an Arsenal player. As an Arsenal <laughs> supporter, okay. you know, I sort of didn't feel good when I saw Mesut Ozil leave the club, considering the number of trophies and the 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 the, the kind of uh, caliber of a player uh, that that he was. I mean, looking looking at Ozil at Fenerbahce, do you think he's gonna stand out the way he did at at, at Arsenal? He will definitely that out. He will definitely because he has a lot to prove, especially to Arsenal, uh, who never gave him a chance uh, uh, at the later stages of his uh you know, contract with the with the club, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a player that needs a, he needed that lifeline. Uh, you see the likes of uh, Lukaku, Alexis Sanchez. Yeah. They both left their clubs to just try and get some fresh air uh, in a different league, and I think it happened with uh, Ozil because uh, if you look at even Fenerbahce, one of the best clubs actually in Europe mm -hmm. and in Turkey, is one of the biggest clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, they need his services, and uh, he needed that you know to get back his self confidence because mm -hmm. uh, you know it came a time whereby uh, Mesut Ozil was he was reduced to just. Uh, yeah, he was, he was <laughs> tweeting left, right and centre. Yeah, about the club. And yeah. he's a player that has really, you know, done a lot for Arsenal. Yeah. Look at the type of goals he's scored. Look at the type of assists that he's made. The number of, you know, uh, the, the type of work that he's put in, the numbers that he's put in for that club. Mm. To me, definitely, he was shortchanged, mm. but probably because reasons beyond the football field. Mm. We know that, we know that well. But he really deserved better, especially for Arsenal, after serving that club for all those years. Mm. But again, this is football, you know. Uh, it's very unforgiving and uh, uh, if you see something like that happen to a player like like Ozil, mm -hmm. definitely you know it, it's bound to happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. But I know he's, ba he's about to get back his mojo, mm -hmm. especially going to Fanabache mm -hmm. and just about a matter of time before he'll be linking with the likes of Samata mm -hmm. up front. Now that will be a very wonderful combination and I can't just wait to see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. You've, been, you've been a player for maybe somebody who's just tuning into the show right now. You've been, you've been a player for Western Steamer, Gormai here and uh, most recently Sofa Parker. What, 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 does, what, what, what do you think will be going through Mesut Ozil's mind, for example, when he was being benched, when he felt like he should have been playing? Maybe you could give us a player's <laughs> introspection on what that, what, what that does to you mentally. Yeah, it, uh, it really dejects a player mentally. Uh, but again, there are two types of players. There are those players who will take it positively, you know, pick up the positives and then maybe take it as a challenge mm -hmm. and try, you know, to work hard, probably get in the numbers. But again, you know, there are those ones who it will definitely torture them mentally. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, this player will totally he'll be totally out of the club because he will not be ready to perform. Mm -hmm. So as a player, it always a diff it's always a very difficult period. It's always a very difficult time, mm -hmm. especially if you're not getting in the play time, mm -hmm. not even the play time alone. You're being left totally out of the you know of the of the team you're not traveling with the team and all that mm -hmm. but again now uh, it's all about how professional you are mm -hmm. if you're professional enough you'll just you know taking the hard blows and uh, just 
pick in the positives mm -hmm. and keep on working hard until eventually you get your opportunity because as a player i feel uh, if you if you if if at all you 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 let your confidence uh, if you at all you let your confidence go down and maybe you're given an opportunity and you don't you know shape up to the task you'll definitely be shipped out because you didn't uh, you know uh, perform well but i think uh, mesut and may probably all other professionals mm -hmm. it's always good to remain calm and just you know pick the positives and work hard probably try and get in the number again Pick the positives, learn the lessons, and keep the right mentality. That is the word from Ronaldo Koth, who is the founder of Arrow Sports Management, Arrow Sports Academy, I beg your pardon. On the streets, I hear people calling him low-budget Lukaku. <laughs> After the break, he's going to be talking to us about why people refer to him as the low-budget Lukaku. That wraps up the second part of the show. See you after the break.